Recently, I'd ranked up to level 1000 in GTA Online. In that time, I've made over $1.2 billion, spent over $740 million, played almost 300 hours and killed almost 20,000 players. I've bought every business and property I could, owned around 300 vehicles, all the helicopters and planes I could ever want, and generally act like money is not an issue. So I wondered what it would be like to get rid of all of that wealth and start all over again. This is my journey on how I went from riches to rags. Previously on Riches to Ranks. Man, it's good to finally meet you, man. After all that time on Life Invaders, man, we're friends in real life now, huh? He seems a bit confused as he's asking me about making some dairy products. You trying to make some cheese? After picking up Lamar's stolen cheese, or drugs, I then have to deliver it to one of his friends, who by the looks of him also really likes cheese. Lamar, being the untrustworthy kind of guy that he is, asked me to check to see if Gerald has any other cheese hidden anywhere else. Maybe you can stick your hand up his ass. Yeah. And I'm now up to rank 3, get in! So we're back. And after spending $350 on a t-shirt and $325 on some jeans, we're ready to now take on some more jobs. Next up was a 2v2 last man standing. Little did they know that I was already a legit badass. So after my teammate, who was actually a potato, got fried, it became a 2v1. But that became a 1v1 after one of them blew themselves up because noob. He was so annoyed at blowing himself up that he actually blamed it on the game and gave it a downvote. As it was double money and RP on dispatch missions this week, I gave them a shot while sporting a painted on haircut that Rockstar decided to give me for some reason. It didn't take long before I was raking in the cash and raking up the RP and shooting up the ranking really quickly. Hey, you there? Hey, man, y'all ain't the first person I come to, or the second, or the sixth. But Opportunity's knocking right now, and Opportunity's name is LD. Come on over to Benny's Original Motor Works and I'll lay it out for you. Now me and Lamar are best buddies after the whole cheese fiasco, he now texts me and calls me all the time. I also managed to spot a celebrity in the form of UFC star John Jones with another DUI. John Jones then got annoyed at me for watching him crash his car while drunk and then began to attack me with a lamppost. He then tried some intimidation tactics by driving right up to me before doing what he's known best for, a hit and run. Obviously, he didn't recognise me as GTA Casino Heist Record Holder and Certified Rank 1000 and he duly paid the price after I stole his car, punched him to death, then did what any self-respecting social justice warrior would do, dump his car into the sea. I then borrowed a friend's $2.9 million supercar to complete the weekly time trial. One minute and 38 seconds later, I'm $101,000 richer. I now had enough money to buy a high-end apartment to start heisting, but it said I needed a phone call off renowned estate agent and property tycoon, Simeon. Speaking of Simeon, he soon sends me a text message claiming I owe him a favour, despite never even speaking to him before. He could have just called me, and then I could buy that high-end apartment, and he could tell me about this alleged favour. But you know. Anyway. I now have enough money to get myself a decent gun. I opt for the carbine rifle as it's a good all-rounder and I'm now ready to take on my next mission. There we are, all yours. Literally seconds after receiving the first text message from Simeon, he sends me the same text message again. Mate, I'm on my way, keep your fucking air on, for fuck's sake. So we start the Simeon mission with some randoms, and once again Rockstar has decided to give me another haircut, this time opting for the oil slick look. With my new weapon in hand, I make short work of the bad guys, who upon reflection probably didn't all need to be murdered, as it was just a repossession job. But this is GTA, and everyone has to die. After expertly parking my vehicle, I wait for the others to arrive for the next part of the mission. Obviously, it was too difficult for them to park a car, so it was left to me and my expertise. 
Not content with sending messages one after the other, Simeon has now resorted to sending multiple messages at exactly the same time. Meanwhile, myself and other teammates now need to repossess three more vehicles, and what faster way to get there than by jumping out of the car that's taking you to them. Owen's much faster strategy didn't pay off however, as he was soon dead before getting anywhere near the next vehicles. I had little trouble collecting and delivering one car, and had already collected the second car, but then... I suppose it was partly my fault, as maybe we had completed it if I didn't stop to send Owen a message of congratulations. Another good way of ranking up and earning some extra cash was to collect the 100 figures dotted around the map. However, with each rank increase meant a bombardment of unlocks and phone calls and texts. And loads more where that came from. After I collected figure number 60, I was bored out of my mind and realised that all this effort probably wasn't worth it. On the plus side, it did now mean that I could finally get my high-end apartment in order to start some heists. I opted for the cheapest Auto Street apartment as it was a good central location. It also meant that I could start storing vehicles, like the free Nissan R35, I mean the Anis Elegy. Wait, it's not free? I need to sign up again to Rockstar Social Club? Ah, uh, I'll get back to it. But even better than that, the apartment came with a free bottomless bottle of wine, which when drank from, turned the apartment into some wobbly fun house, and a bong that you could smoke on until your eyes bled. Money well spent, I'd say. Now I'm on my way to see Lester. I was wondering when you'd show up. The first time I met him had me really confused as I couldn't understand why he'd want to put a coconut flavoured chocolate bar on someone. And if anybody gets particularly fresh, just give me a shout and I can put a bounty on him. I thought it was funny. Okay. But to his credit, he did have the renowned group sex finger on his wall. I head on over to the warehouse to activate the heists. Uh, yes, come in, come in. Who then proceeds to do his best Louis C.K. impression. Maybe, just maybe you are. But maybe, maybe, but maybe, maybe. Ready to do real work. I mean, are you interested? Because if you are, I have a few things uh, coming down the wire soonish. If you want, I'll contact you. But don't let me down on this. While I'm waiting for Lester's next phone call, I buy the heavy utility vest in preparation for the heists. And it's not long before Lester calls and gives a green light for us to start. Alright, we might be ready to move on this thing. If you want the work, you'll get a knock on your door any minute. I'm now all set to start my first heist. Make sure to join back for the next episode where absolutely everything we go according to plan and nobody will die. Thanks for watching everyone, this has been episode 2 of Riches to Rags.